Hello? Hello? Oh, people are jumping in. Do I wave to them or do I just say hello? <laughs> it's my first time doing this. So Montmorency Studio, hello. They can't hear me. Can't hear you? Did they oh, Kurt, how do I do the microphone? Aksh Akshata? Can you hear me? Maybe your uh, speaker's off. I know. Hello? Just take the phone. They won't mind. It'll be fine. Oh, yes, you're good with sound. Thank you. Is that too loud or not loud enough? I'm a novice, what can I say? Okay, Akshat, <laughs> let me know when you want me to start because I was going to enter through my Studio 19 laundry room. I thought people were going to be talking to me. Taylor, can you hear me? Because I've never done this. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. What am I supposed right. to do? Yes, okay. Right, they're streaming the text responses. But why can't I hear people? No, because it would be a cacophony. Okay, so am I just supposed to start this? Uh, Akshata, if you could give me some directions, I guess. Is it 2 o'clock? Five to two. Oh, it's five to two. Okay, we're the early birds. I'll just sit tight for five minutes. Tell the little story. I'll tell the little story. Well, should I sh wait? It's like, it's like the friendly giant. I want to wait for everybody to be gathered. But while you're waiting, this is my laundry room. Well, this, yeah, washing machine dryer which we now triage our food when we bring our food in here and there down the hallway is my son Kurt Hello. who helped me and yes yeah, so I'll just give you an idea that we I guess last uh, winter this will be a f coming up to a year in my garage converted into a studio so this is the laundry room and once it is two o'clock. My husband, who's an accountant, who's very good with time and numbers. Uh, this watch isn't good, but I think it's 156. It's 156. Is it on your phone? We've got four minutes. Oh, someone said hi, Kurt. Uh, hey, Kurt, I think it's one of your friends. Who's that? Michel? Maybe. Michel? How do people know about it? We advertised. Okay, I thought there'd be some back and forth on this. Exactly. No, you're live streaming, so uh, people you. will com we, people will comment oh, as you just, do your stuff. No, and not a friend. Sorry, you said hi to my son Kurt. He's got so many friends. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, because he waved. Thank you. I'm doing my best here, people. So this is my first time doing this. So maybe I'll, I'll take you in a three little, minutes. oh, three minutes. No, my husband, the accountant is saying no. So we're still in the laundry room. Oh, is it two minutes slow? So my husband's watch is two minutes slow. Cause he runs late. 159. One minute in my laundry room. Just so you know, um, this is my muse, my daughter, Claire. This is a uh, mosaic by Akram and Fadia Gabra. So it's a collaboration with Gabra Studios. They, you will see when we enter my studio, did stained glass for my studio and then said they must do my Vienna 
in smalty glass because it looks like Smarties and it's so delicious. Anyway, just word to the wise, when you're fitting an Ikea cabinet in that's exactly the same height, build it standing up. Anyway, just word to the wise there. So this is my laundry room. We are saying goodbye to the laundry and we are entering my studio. Ah, oh, feels good. So in we go. And this, I guess I'm the alert just in that lick of time about COVID. There we go. So this is, oh, Akshata, thank you. We're very excited to enter that door. I thought I'd hear people. So I will read. Beautiful, thank you. Oh, Samuel, thank you for joining in. So nice to see you. Wendy, Leslie, I feel like the, oh my gosh, what was that, um, the, the, through the mirror where they'd name the friends that were coming in when we were in kindergarten. Um, anyway, Rick Taylor, you'll, you'll know that one. So I'll say hi to all my friends here. Anyway, this is my glorious studio that was a garage filled with 30 years of garbage that my friend suggested would convert quite nicely. And it did. So um, thank you, Will Shubat, and my interior designer, um, uh, Stacy McClellan. Anyway, this is the stained glass that I spoke of. I had it commissioned. Uh, I thought that was really important to have glass. I used to work in stained glass, which is why my pair of uh, glass artists from Cairo really could see it, my work converting so nicely because I work in shape with outline. So um, this is what I riffed off of, a Jack Bush painting. So we're always borrowing things as artists, hopefully making them our own. facing light. That's mostly what I have. And I like it because on a beautiful sunny day, it actually will reflect onto my wall and, and inspire me to hit it even harder with light. So these are the things that I have hanging. I used hang it systems. And, um, I'm painting right now my second one after your, oh, Samuel, great. You're working on, I'm always happy to look at it. I did teach at Arts Etobicoke, one, uh, I believe it was eight week course, and I kept it pretty wide open. Just show up and be brave because that's what art is all about, is just um, enjoying the process. And it's really, it's taken me a long time to get there. So, Right now, I've had the joy, incredibly, in this situation, to slow down my practice and really search for light. It's so simple and so, so complex. And this, I'll show you four pieces that I've developed together. And that helps me challenge how a green can be a northern light or how a green can be a tree or how a green can be in a rainbow so keep your thinking wide open hello Harun Lori Blair welcome um, so as I've said this is my first time doing this Whatever questions you might have, this is my my sacred space. Nature is my church. I can say that. It, it just is. Um, some of my inspiration that's really pushing me in my palette. Rick Taylor, you'll probably recognize some of these paintings, these gems. Early Kandinsky. And 
fabulous work. He was actually rejected in the school of Bauhaus back in the day. So there you go, people. Just don't give up. And then I was lucky enough to do a Rocky Mountaineer um, commissioned ride last year. And sure enough, when I was working with their corporate palette, I realized it's early Kandinsky. So whether you're a designer or a painter or just a person that appreciates art, look at stuff and see, you know, it's so many influences on so many of us. So if there's any questions that people might have about my practice, my newest piece, I could go forever, is a tondo, which is like a prayer. Just that shape is so lovely. Um, can I view? I'm not sure how to do that. Go and go live with Kathy. Kathy. Oh, there. Hi, Kathy. Hello. So good. Another voice. <laughs> yes. Oh. And where do I know you from? Oh, Sarah. Snowy, thank you for joining. I see some people that love that shape. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord. Anyway, these are really important new steps for me, but they're old school because Tondo comes, it's short for Rotondo from the Renaissance, when Renaissance painters painted in the round. And I always wanted to, and so I did. Um, and I have another uh, pair that I will be developing. Yeah, there's something about it just frees up this space completely. No corners, no edges. It, it blends in nicely with other shapes, for sure. Uh, did I just see an Arthur Schilling book? Yes, Richard Taylor. Hello. I mean, I do often get asked or commented upon that my work looks... Uh, indigenous. It's not. I'm a graphic designer. Having said that, the spirit of the land that comes through in Arthur Schilling's work is outstanding and is so pure. So that's why I have the uh, Ojibwe dream there as inspiration. Does your color palette change depending on your mood? Is there any specific color palette in this isolation time you are working on? Really good point, because as I earlier referenced, I am joyful in pushing myself to find more light. As I, my light streams in, it's where I'm going. It's just more pure. Uh, it, it's... Luminous and Rick Taylor, any Leonard heads out there? Luminosity. When you place a color a little bit lighter and a whole lot brighter than what's next to it, it has luminescence. So it's such a lovely thing to challenge yourself to paint. Even this one here. Hello. I want you to feel like that sunshine around Jasper is just pouring through around the bend, blinding. So that's what I'm going after right today. And typically we're trained here with the Leonard heads uh, to understand our toolbox in color. So yeah, it's understanding values, value contrast, uh, how to create light, I use a lot, it would seem like outline, but I actually keep layering my shapes. And every time I add a new layer, it's almost like a heartbeat or a pulse. I like to think of it like that. So there's, there's, they're peaceful, as I've noticed, very peaceful, but there's an energy, a life force. Akshata, thank you. Does your color palette change? Okay, depending on the mood. You know, I think I always gravitate to this. My daughter just, she's working out of the house. She did um, 
an Enneagram on me and figures that I'm an enthusiastic creative and we tend to be melancholy. So I use my art to, it changes everything. When I gravitate to these colors, it, you can't not but smile. And yes, this would be my um, wall of smalls, I call it. And here I'll show you my process. And when I was studying at Nielsen Park Creative Center, which is one of the most fabulous resources, as is Arts Etobicoke in Etobicoke, to be able to have access to, typically, Brian Smith was teaching a life drawing course. And he showed me this very simple technique for drawing with chalk and then wiping it off. So that's how I start any of my paintings is as a graphic designer, they're pretty carefully thought through in terms of shape. And then I paint in pretty much adult coloring, just fill in the shapes more or less. And I do have some questions here that I was given by Arts Etobicoke that I'm supposed to answer. So here we go. Oh, and actually, before I do that, because I've got a divergent brain, it pops all over the place. I'm going to show you the reference for, this was a hiking trip I did with my brother, Brian, in driving into Jasper, and there had been fires. So I wanted, especially in this time, to paint the idea of rebirth, regeneration. So nature truly does inspire. And I had to get out and hike in those beautiful wildflowers that some people might call a weed. But anyway, I kept this idea of a painting for probably three years and now I was brave enough to take it on. So questions from Arts Etobicoke. Here's the little page. So guess, Ooh, that's a little scary. Um, I will answer these questions. So, how long have I been affiliated with Arts Etobicoke? And that would be just coming up on a year. I was invited to have a show, which was lovely, to be in the community. I can walk there. Uh, I like the fact that they serve a much-needed um, part of our community who maybe don't have funds to afford paying for art. So I also then taught, which was lovely. Samuel, you were one of my wonderful students and you were a little afraid to get started, but you did a fantastic painting. So I'm looking forward to seeing your second one. So I continue to be affiliated. We did a deputation at the budget committee meetings a couple months ago to fight for the $2 million funding to the arts in Etobicoke, which was put through. So thank you, Arts Etobicoke for including me in that, uh, in that forum. What is something people don't know about me? Okay, well, there's lots. Um, um, I wanted to be a banjo player. I do actually, I still have a banjo that I kick around with. Um, what do I do with my spare time when you're not creating art? Well, Rick, that's a good question because somehow I'm always creating art even in my sleep but I do garden I have a swan topiary out front in my garden and I do have my little box arugula my son likes arugula anyway I'm trying this for a first time um, more questions here okay next question Oh, go-to meal for guests. Well, I guess the question these days, what's, what's a guest? <laughs> so my kids have been cooking, which has been really amazing. Uh, they've taken over the kitchen duties. Um, but yeah, hors d'oeuvres. I'm an hors d'oeuvres kind of gal. What's the most meaningful art experience you've had? Wow. Um, there's a tough one, actually. I met a client who came to the studio 
she was from Kelowna. She was on a conference. I said, I'll pick you up, do a studio tour, drove her to the airport, ended up chatting with her. She was an oncologist and that my nephew, Craig, had cancer. She was tireless working. She ended up knowing Craig's oncologist in Ottawa and she did not stop. We were texting and emailing and talking to, it was pretty remarkable. Over a little PEI beach walk painting is how we connected. Um, another meaningful art experience, I went up and volunteered at, um, oh my gosh, the camp. Uh, it's, it's for women and children in the shelter system that St. Lawrence Park Church supports. Uh, it's not Camp Ooch, that's Camp for Cancer that I also, I like to actually help cancer causes. Uh, I did, just painted a garden gnome for Gilda's Club that was supposed to be at Canada Blooms, but guess what? It's not. But John Tory also, I understand, was one of the painters, as was Mark Cullen. So um, whenever people ask me to offer, you know, to, to help causes, I do. So that's, that's been the most meaningful thing for me with my art. Um, why do you think community arts are important? Because we as a species have been wired to create. And creating in a group is even more special, as Rick Taylor would attest to. When we go, I still learn to paint with a group of wonderful painters at the Etobicoke Art Group. It's community. It's your tribe. It, um, yeah, it allows you to be fearless and find out who you really are. So those are my answers. If anyone's got questions, let me know. There we go. So here actually, and I think it's not done because I did it a while back. Well, maybe from this angle, it's one of my Rocky Mountaineer paintings. It's called Salmon Running. You can see the little salmon in there. Anyways, I'm looking forward to teaching again, Samuel, if they're going to have me back, I think at some point, once we're out and about as human beings. What else can I show you? Yeah, so there you go. I have files and files of reference uh, that I work from. I work, yeah, anyway, lots of photographs. And tennis skirt, welcome. Oh. So if there's any questions, please send them through. Pulsing movement is coming through. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, there you go. It's life force. And this, the concept behind this was the old forest standing watch. Because even in the stumps or what appears to be a dead tree, there's still, there's still life. And they are communities, trees, which is amazing how they communicate through their roots. And yes, rebirth is extremely relevant right now. And hopefulness for the, a new world, my Lord. Yeah, maybe really evaluating what's truly necessary in our, in our lives day to day. Maybe uh, pairing it back hasn't been such a bad thing. Do I listen to music while you paint? You betcha. Um, in fact, there was a pseudoscientist, Japanese scientist, that said snowflakes formed perfectly listening to Mozart and Beethoven and misshapen when they listen to heavy metal, whether or not that's true. But I do find um, Mozart and Beethoven and Bach are wonderful for snow scenes. Day-to-day, uh, -day, I love John Mayer. Just, I'm just saying, I love John Mayer, Van Morrison, uh, Brother Where Art Thou soundtrack. 
amazing. Bluegrass, some banjo playing in there. Oh, Rick, I'm seeing lots of complimentary colors. How much of that is planned? You know, at this point in our careers, Rick, we don't even know anymore <laughs> how much is planned. But I think it's, um, it's an intellectual pursuit. And we've learned our toolbox so well that hopefully it's just by rote now. But I do know technically what I'm applying in terms of mixing. And then it becomes intuitive where it just sort of takes off on its own and becomes its own magical. It sort of paints itself once you've sort of released it a little bit. Here was a little, little tiny guy I did of uh, 12 by 12 of uh, Lake Louise on my Rocky Mountain trip. That was our last stop. And again, the lit sun on that mountain was so delicious. Oh, love the old brother soundtrack. Absolutely. Oh, check out Keen Music. Okay, I can do that. Any other suggestions for music? I know when we would do life drawings sometimes at Nielsen Park, some people weren't keen on having music. And I remember uh, Catherine, uh, Mc oh, gosh. the Painted Girls author, her name's escaping me now. She was interviewed on the CBC and asked that question about music, if you listen. And her answer was exactly bang on. Depends on what part of the process I'm in. If I really have to be exerting or tapping into a lot of my RAM, I don't have any music with lyrics, just instrumental. And sometimes it's just quiet, so it depends. Yeah, and the reference, I do like putting that up my reference to where the painting ends up being. Um, yeah, and some of these end up being sort of in my head. Like that's just a, a memory of uh, our cottage up on Big Doe where you'd have to go from Little Doe into Middle Doe into Big Doe through the, uh, the landforms. So yeah, some of it you just, yeah, you've done, seen it so many times and done it so many times, you just lay it out there. But I kind of like this, the symbolism of, of the peaceful, the homage to the moonlight, the sort of everyone out there in nature getting it, that something's happening. We tend to forget to just slow it down and really appreciate that glorious moonlight, sunlight, Oh, Tuesday Heartbreak is my favorite band. Correct, Lori. Correct. Their, their gig at Timothy's was canceled. Uh, but they'll be back. My husband has a 11-piece funk and soul band, and our son is the drummer. So that's always a lot of fun. Yeah, we got a house full of uh, musicians, uh, artists, creative people. Can you describe your process more? Yeah, I guess I think I touched on that. Just the fact that I do carefully prime my canvas, all my canvases. You'll see a stack. I had my niece come in because she was my assistant in the summer. I also do a bit of yoga in here these days. So all of my canvases are primed in batches. Active ground, right, Samuel? You learned that from me. And then I sometimes can see shapes if it's really active. And that can tell me what, what, where, who, all that. But I'm a fairly um, intentional painter. I know uh, both Rick, you'll know painting with Joe Rich, who I own some of his work uh, at Etobicoke at Nielsen Park, he's so expressionistic as his road of pain. They're so free and crazy, just having fun. I have fun, but I'm fairly controlled. So it's the only thing really I feel like I can control without killing it. Well, that's not really the right thing. Without, I can, I can help it live. I give it life with enough control that it, it's allowed to breathe. It's a fine line as it is with everything. 
And oh, do I have my next project planned? I've got two um, ro uh, tondos that are in my dining room delivered uh, plywood. So they're raw plywood right now. So yeah, my next uh, project is I'm going to pull out big can of gesso somewhere down there in all my cupboards. And I'm going to do another pair of uh, these guys. Um, yeah, I think that's all I've got planned. A lot of my shows have been converted to virtual shows. The Art Gallery of Hamilton's big show is going to be virtual. Um, I'm doing work right now with a Japanese company on a corporate calendar. Hopefully that gets through. And um, I'm doing work with Singular out of Paris. So they're really looking for content right now because a lot of people are sitting at home looking at art. Um, Rick, I think we probably did meet in Steve Rose's class. <laughs> I wasn't working in this style. Was there a single pivoting piece that was the key? Yeah, the, p the key was Kim Lee Ko. I did a class with Kim Lee Ko, again, people, Nielsen Park, Creative Center. And I did a piece that was like a lot of pieces you see out there, the same. And I thought that's how I ought to be painting. And then I just showed her something. I was almost embarrassed. I showed her this other thing that was the beginning of my work as it looks today. And she was so unequivocal. She said, do not do this thing, other thing to look like anybody but you. She was so great in saying, you must do you. So that was Kim Lee Ko. Um, and yeah, you're gonna find great teachers uh, fellow students. Um, my neighbor is Chris Proctor, so I'll get her to pop her head in the, the sliding door and give me a critique. Um, yeah, we need um, feedback. It's always good as artists. And if there's anything else. Akshata, any suggestions? Hello, everybody. Um, oh, well, there's my messy sink. Eh, least favorite job, cleaning brushes. Just saying. In these days where I'm cleaning so many other things. Eh. But uh, yeah, and I've, I've accepted the fact that I do this terrible. Wrote a paint, said it was okay. So I figure I can do it. I paint on my lids. So I end up having these giant plastic. In fact, I could make art. Out of these babies. But anyway, there is somewhere in the studio a palette underneath all my stuff that I just don't use. So do your thing, whatever it is, you'll figure out a process. Emerging artists just starting out. Just do it. Just start. Just try stuff. Uh, do fabulous forgeries. If there's an artist that you like, I taught at Gilda's for a period and I just would bring in books, Wolf Kahn, um, Group of Seven, Jack Bush, um, Jackson Pollock, just things that people could relate to and encourage them, whatever they gravitated towards, just knock it off. Try and understand what a good artist is, is doing and, um, You'll find yourself, but you just got to make art. Um, yeah, try out different brands of paint. There's um, student quality, which are great for fillers, and then my golden. So, yeah, for emerging artists too. I mean, I was suggested to me by Christine Proctor, who is an OSA artist. I was a graphic design I ran a graphic design studio so I was a trained artist and she suggested Nielsen Park and I kind of went oh I guess I'll try it out it's such a wonderful resource so many great teachers get out there with other people and get brave and they'll help you figure out what to buy and how to get started you just got to show up and that's again we have a conversation amongst artists the the notion of 
do you paint when you feel like it you it's a it's a job i show up i'm in here and the more you're in here the more you just get past any blocks and you get to something where do i shop for my supplies typically curries uh it used to be Stevenson's paint, big Canadian paint company went bankrupt about a year ago, which was unfortunate. Uh, Curry's, yeah, and I have a great framer, day and night framing. They do my tondos, they make my larger canvases, really super quality. Uh, that's about it. As a landscape artist, how do you feel about nature thriving during a time like this? Nature just keeps on going. Nothing's stopping the birds from tweeting, which we're feeding. We do have our feeder out. Uh, nature's been doing this for thousands of years through fires and droughts. And it's, um, yeah, you just got to breathe and know that we're just a tiny little speck of a period of time right now and we'll, we'll be through it quickly enough. And I'm happy actually, I do have, I'm quite a gardener. When I raised my family, I didn't paint. I only painted in the last 12 years. Uh, I garden, I cook, I, um, yeah, I used to do stained glass. I started studying banjo. Anyway, there's so many ways to be creative and I encourage everybody, get a bag of markers. I think I was cleaning up my, yeah, here, just, if you've got kids or old stuff kicking around, I mean, these are all, they're just markers, a bag of markers. Just start drawing a rainbow. Just get inspired to move a tool in your hand and you'll figure out what's comfortable, whether it's an instrument for music or a lino cut or putting dirt into, a, you know, the earth to plant something. But yeah, we're wired to be tactile, creative people. And for people that say they're not, get rid of that thought. We all are. It's all there. And 2.30, any more questions? Akshata, any suggestions? Oh, which artists have influenced your art? Okay, there's a good question. Lots. <laughs> I started early on when I went to OCA. I was a big fan of... Alex Colville and Ken Danby, super realists. And as many artists will tell you, their work will evolve. So um, I can actually see if this is gonna work. I'll take you to show my early work because there's an evolution happening. That's a Dennis Cliff, right, Rick Taylor? Doesn't that look fabulous? Fabulous in my... Um, I do collect art. That is a um, Quan Steele, Rhoda Payne, Cheryl Mount, Chris Proctor. Anyway, I, I collect art, people. There's a lot of artists out there. Um, here is my early work. <laughs> my kids as cows. So that I saved because my friend Ruth said, you must get it back from a gallery. I saved it. I think because people like to know, can you really draw? So artists typically start by drawing realistically. And then the more you do it, the more, well, anyway, often we, I'm a semi-abstract painter now. That's been my evolution. Uh, so now my influences, love Jack Bush's work, group of seven for sure got a whole Wolf Con. I got a whole library here of books that are hidden, but Rick Taylor's got the best library anywhere. Um, Diebenkorn, Richard Diebenkorn. Uh, who else? Yeah, and I often will have an art book open just to get the juices flowing. 
And the warmth of sunlight is so well expressed in all oh, that is so true. It's light. It is light. Moonlight. Oh, forever I will paint moonlight. It's uh, a real challenge, a wonderful challenge. And yes, Steve Rose, great teacher. John Leonard, great teacher. Uh, yeah, find a great teacher. Yeah, and if nothing, just go on the go on the internet, find something you like, and then try and figure out how to do it. Art Nouveau, Johanna Itten, that's color theory. Uh, Klimt, hello, hello. How could I not mention Gustav? Gustav Klimt went to the Belvedere a couple times in Vienna. So this is my homage, my homage, my daughter, my muse. And for those of you that didn't see, I collaborate with a pair of glass artists who were really inspired by my Vienna. Yeah. So that was, I saw, in fact, the references on my Facebook. That's a shot. I was sitting on a bus, riding the bus in Vienna. And I happened to get that house down the avenue. Always have a camera. And now these phones make it so easy, people. Take pictures. Uh, and anything new? Shop for your supplies. We did that. Okay. Which artist do you get excited about today? Wow. Wow, I tell you, I'm really enjoying Jack Bush. Uh, his every color has a job. I'm kind of a hard working sort of gal. I want to understand what, why I'm using a color. And Jack Bush is so elegant. And he pairs it down so beautifully. Sometimes less is more. So it's understanding, you know, to get full impact with, um, you know, the My internet connection's getting a little weak in there. Adding the studio sort of pushes our internet. Uh, what was it like exhibiting with Don Cavan, who passed recently? He's, uh, she was such a charming, lovely, lovely, generous soul. And I will show you, there's our Dennis Cliff. There is our Don Cavan. And the reason I chose this Don Cavan he, I believe, was 86 when, when he passed. He has such restraint and such a clarity in terms of what he's, how he's executing. And I'm really crazy with the rainbow, almost out of control, too much color. I'm super drawn to the fact that he's playing with complex neutrals. So elegant and temperature, warm, cool, warm and cool grays. Anyway, yeah, the, take a look. There's art, great art everywhere. So yeah, Don Cabin was just so lovely. So... That's about it, people. If there's more questions. Great wave. Thank you, everyone, for joining. So, Akshata, any suggestions now? Saying this is my first. Yes, happy to share, honestly. If we can't share, process. Yeah, even cooking. Cooking's fun. Just make stuff. And I got, uh, yeah, Akshata, thank you for inviting me to do this. 
so I'm not sure how we save this, how you want to tell us where you buy, oh, where to buy your work. Well, that's always a good question. <laughs> At Studio 19 here in my home in Etobicoke, 19 Birchcroft. Uh, yeah, my website, Darlene Kulig Artist. Uh, if you could save this, okay, if you could save this archive it. Okay. Thank you. I enjoyed every moment. Oh, thank you. One never knows what people are really wanting to know, but I was just being as transparent as I possibly could. Yes, well done. I miss our Tuesday gatherings, Rick. So much in agreement with that. Maybe we'll set up a forum. <laughs> anyway, we'll be back soon enough, people. This will all be a, a distant memory. Okay, so thank you everyone. I'm gonna try and figure out how to archive this uh, video and maybe we'll do it another time soon. Thank you everybody. <laughs>